is good, Commanders fans. Some unfortunate news. They have started to make cuts. So they did cut running back Jared Patterson, fan favorite, uh, PG County native, went to Pilate High School. So a lot of fans for uh, Jared Patterson. Had a really good game against the Dallas Cowboys. Had a good preseason where he uh, had an and one touchdown where he made a guy miss, juked him out of shoes, made a guy miss in the phone booth, and got a face mask and still scored a touchdown. But um, it, it, it's a numbers game, and it's just Ron Rivera's preference, really, and Eric Bieniemy's preference. Uh, you can kind of see the writing on the wall when they brought in Derek Gore, a former chief. I think Derek Gore's going to make the practice squad, but I don't even think Jared, Jared Patterson is going to be on the practice squad, to be honest with you. I know I just don't think he will. I think they're going to keep Derek Gore over them because of uh, he's Eric, he's an Eric Bieniemy guy. And then they drafted Chris Rodriguez in the sixth round, and Chris Rodriguez had a solid preseason. Did have that bad fumble. But he has solid, he had a solid preseason, and they they're not going to cut their draft pick. And there, there's no reason to cut Chris Rodriguez, but it's just you look at the running back room and then Jonathan Williams. They like him a lot, so I think they're going to keep Jonathan Williams on the practice squad as well. But Jared Patterson, he deserves a spot on somebody's 53 man roster or some game day snaps. I think he can be an impactful player in this league. I think he's so talented. I think he's he's a he's a he's he's a solid kick returner. I think he can really – I think he has a chance to possibly return punts in the league as well. He did that before in the preseason. He did it in practice. So um, he's a versatile guy. He can catch out the backfield. He's a good, tough runner. He's one, He's a, He adds a different dynamic to the game because he's so short, 5'6", five 5'7", foot 5'8", six, five foot five foot on a good day where you can't really see him behind the uh, offensive line. And I think he's a darn good player. He deserves to get a spot on a roster somewhere. He really does. So I wish him the best. Once again, I don't think he's going to be put on the practice squad here. I think that's it for him. Uh, I think there's a lot of teams that could certainly, certainly use his services. And no shade to Samaj P. Ryan, but you saw it didn't work out for him here. But you look at him on the Bengals, and he's you know getting screen passes and making big plays with Joe Burrow here and there and a big play in the playoffs. So if Samaj P. Ryan can do that, I think Jared Patterson can certainly go somewhere and be impactful and get a good role on a team. So... Uh, I, I wish the guy the best. Um, it's unfortunate it's not going to work out in his hometown, but, you know, I wish him the best. I really do. So um, other guys, and I, I got that right on, I think everybody knew that was coming. I got that right on my 53-man roster that he was not going to be the roster. There's going to be three backs, three or four. I think Alex Armand is going to be considered as a running back or a tight end. And then, they're, they're, of course, they're going to keep B-Rob, Antonio Gibson, and um, and Chris Rodriguez. And then after that, Alex Armand maybe as, as a running back slash fullback. All right, so other guys that were released, not a surprise. Marcus Kemp, who is an Eric Bieniemy guy, but I think they have priority with him. I think they really want to keep him on the practice squad. Uh, if not on the practice squad, then I think they will try to, you know, I think he'll end up on a roster some way, somehow as a gunner. Some way he will suit up this year. I just have a feeling on that because Eric Bien he's an Eric Bieniemy guy. He really values his leadership. Terry McLaurin talked about Marcus Kemp's leadership. And uh, Marcus Kemp did a good job in the Super Bowl blocking on that punt return by Kadarius Tony, So I think he will find his way back onto the roster some way, somehow. Uh, if not in the beginning of the season or later in the in the second half of the year, some way, somehow. Uh, Washington, they cut linebacker Farrar Gardner, the Raging Cajun. Not surprised that by that. Isaiah Mack, they released him per Sam Fortier. They released DJ Sturgis per Ben Standig. Not a surprise there. And then Anthony Maltalvo Jr., the defensive tackle, uh, DJ Sturgis is a cornerback. That was per Sam Fourier. They released cornerback Demarcus Fields per Nikki Javala. And then they released defensive end Joshua Pryor uh, per Nikki Javala as well. They cut safety Josh Kalu. They just signed Josh Kalu not too long ago, a couple weeks ago from the Tennessee Titans, the guy who had that crazy interception. Uh, they cut him per Sam Fortier. Then they cut wide receiver Zion Bowens, who we just didn't see much of in the preseason. Had a couple of good catches in, in training camp, but nothing much in the preseason at all. That was per Nikki Javala as well. Um, I'm going to look at some of Ben Stanek's tweets as well. They basically, they basically have the same tweets. I've been at work all day. Um, I got a new job, so there's going to be a lot of uh, car videos. You know, I won't be working from home for the moment. So there's probably going to be a lot of car videos for instant news. So back to the old school kind of videos for you guys. All right. Um, that's about it for the cuts. Yeah, Josh Pryor, Anthony Montavo. And then big news for our week one opponent now. It's going to be Col Colt McCoy just got released. So they're either going to be starting Clayton Toon or um, Josh Dobbs, who they just traded for, which is insane. So uh, you look at the spread on FanDuel, the line went from like six and a half to seven and a half right now. We're seven and a half favorites. We got to blow them out in our first game without Dan Snyder. It's going to be a sold out house, sold out FedEx field. Magic Johnson's supposed to be there. Of course, Josh Harris is going to be there. 
So it it it, it th we got to win this game by you know, and, and I'm not gonna take them lightly. But this this is a game we got we got to put our foot on their necks. We got to smell blood and go for the kill from the jump. Like we really got to beat them by more than ten points. We gotta we gotta make a statement in this game. This is kind of like the college games where you got to beat a team by at least ten or fifteen points to make an impression to make the tournament or make an impression on the to make the bowl game or whatever. Where you got to really beat the spread. We got to beat the spread on this game. We got to win by more than seven or ten points against Josh Dobbs and Clayton Toon. So they, we really got to dominate this game. The, the Cardinals are not looking to win anytime soon. They're not looking to win this year at all. So we, we got to make a statement and, and, and put our foot on their necks, to be honest. So, um, but shout out to prize picks too. So yeah, without, without, and I was looking forward to Cole McCoy playing. Like I really was. I wanted to see Cole McCoy come back because that was just going to be a funny game. I really, I respect Cole McCoy. I like his toughness and his heart. Him as a backup, I thought he, I thought he wasn't a bad backup for us when he was here. He just got injured all the darn time. So I was really looking forward to that. But I do have a player prop for you guys before the season starts. Uh, September 7th, you got to get this uh, wager in. This one's on Jahan Dotson. I just saw this one. They took Terry McLaurin off the board, but Jahan Dotson over 750 and a half receiving yards. He's going to smash that, man. I think he's going to get 1,000 yards in the season. No less than 800 yards. So definitely put uh, a wager in on that for sure. So that's my play of the day, play of the week, play of the year, honestly. Shout out to Price where you get 100% deposit match. Using my promo code real at Oliver. Up to $100. Use that in the link down below in the description. So that's about it for today. Those are all the cuts. And uh, like I said, Marcus Kim's not a surprise, but Jared Patterson's not a surprise either. But I just wish him the best. I think he can definitely latch on a team and be impactful and make plays for sure. Because uh, he is a dynamic back. He really is. I think he's very talented. So um, we'll see what happens with the other wide receivers like Kaz Allen. I think he should have been released today, in my opinion. Mitchell Tinsley probably will be cut tomorrow. Now, guys who are being released today, and I think they they might be helping Jared Patterson out by releasing him now so teams can claim him on waivers earlier. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. All right, you guys, Hell to Commanders. Peace.